Hi, I'm Conor Hodden, and this is Lecture 4 in the Probability and Combinatorics section of Mathematics for Computer Science A. Uh, this lecture just gives a few more examples of calculating probabilities uh, using combinatorial reasoning. So the first example we're going to talk about is the what people call the birthday problem. Uh, the question of, if you have a group of people, for definiteness, let us say, um, uh, n equals 20. So if you have 20 people, what's the probability that 2 out of those 20 people will share a birthday? Uh, the reason people like this as a problem, well, there's two reasons. Uh, the first is the answer is uh, slightly counterintuitive. The chance is higher than you might expect. Uh, and the second is it is a, a problem where you work out a probability using combinatorics. So uh, how are we going to do this? Well, <clears throat> some ground rules first. Uh, we're going to leave off complexities. So we're going to um, <coughs> leave off the existence of uh, leap days, for example. Apologies to people born on a leap day. Uh, and secondly, we're going to assume that the uh, birthdays are distributed evenly across the year. In fact, that's kind of a, a worst case scenario. You know, the fact that birthdays are slightly bunched, uh, there's not much else to do in January, for example, so lots of people are born in September. Um, for evolutionary reasons, I think lots of people are born in February at the start of the, the summer. That bunching of the birthdays actually makes the chance of a pair slightly higher. But we're going to leave uh, all of that out. And so the problem becomes one of distributing uh, birthdays to, to the 20 people. So you can imagine the 20 people uh, lined up like so, one, two, three, da, 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 da. this is person 20 here, so we have 20 people, uh, and we're going to give each of them a birthday. There's two scenarios, the one is the sort of total number of ways of doing this distribution, uh, that's the thing that's going to go on the bottom in working out the probability, so this is where there's uh, no pair, sorry, I should say, um, what we're interested in is the chance that at least two people have the same birthday. Calculating that sounds quite complicated because uh, the problem of at least two people having the same birthday includes the problem of precisely two people having the same birthday, three people having the same birthday, two people having one birthday, two people having another, and everybody else having different birthdays. So working out uh, the at least uh, probability uh, might seem complicated. It's much easier to work out the, the other thing, the probability that no people um, ha have, have the same birthday. So uh, the thing that goes uh, on the bottom will be uh, the probability, uh, just the total number of ways of distributing the birthdays among the people. So um, there's 365 days that uh, dates that you can give this guy, uh, 365 days that we can give this person, this, uh, this person here, there's 365, and so on, uh, all the way down. So we have uh, 365 uh, to the power of 20, basically. Now, if we were doing the same thing, um, but uh, we're doing it without uh, any two uh, of these people having the same birthday, well then, the, the first person, there's still a choice of 365 days that they can give to that uh, first person. But the second person, there's only 364 uh, days. And the third person, uh, there's 363. And so this time, when we're distributing uh, the days of the year uh, to assign people as their birthdays in this description of the birthday problem, um, the constraint that we don't want two of the people to have the same birthday means that we go 365, 364, so on, all the way down to um, three, four, six. So that gives us 20 numbers on the bottom. The usual thing, this is the zeroth number, and so this is the 20th number here. And so the probability of the event of no pair is going to be equal to this thing, 365, uh, 364, blah, 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 346, over 365, 5365, by uh, 365. Uh, and so the number on the top uh, is the number of ways of distributing the birthdays along the list um, where there's no pairs. The number on the bottom um, is the way of distributing uh, so, that, uh, so that there's no constraint. Uh, you might worry uh, that uh, I have an ordering ambiguity. Um, doesn't matter what order I, I distribute the birthdays in. Well, the order on uh, a different description where you just give out the birthdays and you don't worry about the order, that will introduce a, an ordering combinatorial factor, but that will cancel on the top and bottom. So both ways of thinking about it are equally good. And this one's, um, in principle, this one's easier to write down. Um, it's just note in passing for when we do the general case, uh, and also uh, for when you, if you are actually working this out in a computer, um, that you can split this up into individual little fractions like so. Uh, so the advantage there, um, the immediate advantage is often when you're working out things like binomial coefficients, uh, factorial type things, working out the, the number directly um, 
can quickly overwhelm the integer register on your computer and, and leave you dealing with extremely large numbers, often in working out uh, binomial coefficients, for example, even for uh, reasonably small numbers. It's important not to uh, work out the, the numerator and the, and the denominator or divide one by the other, but to split the terms up in, in, into pairs and work them out as you go along. So this number here would be a big number. These individual numbers are all floating point numbers, uh, just less than one or equal to one in the first case. In fact, if you do that, uh, what you get is uh, 0.59 thereabouts, like so. And so that wasn't quite the thing we were interested in. We were interested in uh, the probability that people um, share a birthday. And so that's given by um, P uh, share uh, is equal to 1 minus uh, P uh, no pair. Uh, and that's uh, about 0 0.42. So if you have a group of 20 people, the probability that uh, two of them will have, at least two of them will have the same birthday is 0.42 or 42 percent. And uh, I don't know how what your intuition was, uh, but m mine would have been that the probability would have been much lower. Uh, we can, of course, easily work out uh, the general case. Uh, well, like so. Um, so if, if now it's, we just have n people, well, the probability uh, that they share is 1 minus the probability of no pair, as above. And the probability that's equal to 1 minus, and now we just do the, um, we take the set of um, fractions we had before, and instead of having 20 of them, we have, um, we have n of them. Like so, so i equals 0 to n minus 1. So that's n terms starting at, at i equals to 0. Um, and so that gives us a, a formula for the probability that two people share a birthday in a group of n people. And I have a graph of that here. Uh, so this is a graph of the probability uh, of a match, at least one match, against uh, n here. So this is n here, and this is the graph. You can see it has a sort of softmax type appearance. Uh, this is uh, 20 that we were dealing with before. So it's coming to, oh, I should say, yeah, 0.42 or uh, 0.41 it should have been, like so. And you can see that uh, even for quite a small group, it already uh, is, uh, is is 50%. If you have 60 people, you're almost definitely going to have at least one pair with the same birthday. Uh, there's a um, code for that available uh, on the GitHub. It's called birthday.jl, and that's just the code I used to work out that, that graph. So that's the first of the two examples I wanted to do. The second example is uh, the so-called partition function, or it's an application of the partition function. So let me first say what the partition function is. So the partition function. The partition function is about ways that you can divide something up into subgroups. So the binomial uh, coefficient is an example of, of, of a partition function. So in the binomial coefficient, n choose r, uh, that we discussed uh, in an earlier lecture, that's the number of ways of selecting r out of n objects. So if you have your n objects here, here's uh, four of them, uh, and say, so this is n equals two, or r equals two, we're asking the number of ways that we can um, get a subset of size two. So that's a way of sort of selecting two of the elements um, and leaving the other two elements uh, in the set. And so it's a way of dividing the original set up into uh, two groups. So we think of it as selecting one group after the other, but of course that's equivalent to, to dividing the group into two. And uh, these are just different ways you can do it. Make sure I finish this now. And so that's six different divisions of the original four elements into two groups. Uh, the ones that we're putting into the subset and the ones that we're leaving out. And of course, uh, n uh, choose r is equal to n factorial over r factorial by n minus r factorial. In this case, it's equal to six. So that's um, the binomial uh, coefficient is an example of a partition function, a function that counts the number of ways you can split a set up into different subsets. But the general partition function, which we usually write like this, n1, n2, up to uh, nr, different r here, this counts the number of ways that you can uh, subdivide n up into groups of size n1, n2, all the way up to nr. So we have n, and we split into groups uh, of, size, of those sizes. 
size n1 through to nr. Uh, and of course, uh, because we're splitting it up, n1 plus n2 up to nr has to be equal to n. And so the, um, the, the normal binomial uh, 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 coefficient that we talk about uh, in this notation would look like, because we're dividing it up into r and the, the ones that we take uh, and the ones that we leave, leave behind. Okay, so uh, if you have, if you had, uh, let's say, six objects, n equals six. Oh, sorry, I should actually give a formula for it. And the formula, which um, is easy enough to uh, work out, to derive, um, but we'll uh, just write it down here. Uh, it's equal to n factorial over n1 factorial, n2 factorial, all the way up to n r factorial. I'm sorry that we've used r for two things. r here is the number of subgroups. Uh, this r here is the size of subgroups. And here we're having two subgroups. So uh, the partition function, n divided into n1, n2 up to nr, is given by n factorial over n1 factorial, n2 factorial up to nr factorial. So uh, to do an example of size uh, 6, so say we had six objects and we're dividing them up into one group uh, of size 3, one group of size 2, and one group of size 1. So how many ways can you do that? Well, that's 6 divided into 3, 2, 1. So that'll be equal to 6 factorial over 3 factorial, uh, 2 factorial. 1 factorial is, of course, 1. So let's go back to that. So we have uh, n equals 6, n1 equals 3, n2 equals 2, uh, n1 equals 1. So we're dividing a group of 6 objects into 3, 2, and 1. Well, then we have the number of ways of doing that is this partition function here is equal to 6 factorial over 3 factorial by 2 factorial is equal to 6 by 5, 4 by 3 by 2 over 3 by 2 by 2. Like that cancels with that and that. That cancels with that. And we get um, 60. So if you have six objects and you ask how many ways can we split them up into a group of size three, another group of size two, and a group of size one. So, um, so here, here would be an example. Well, one way of doing it would be to have A, C, D as the group of three, and um, B and F as the group of size two, and uh, E as the group of size one. But I don't want to do them all because there's 60 of them. That's what the partition function does. It's uh, quite a, a useful object, as you can see. I'm going to do a quick example of working out a probability uh, using the uh, partition function. Um, here, here's a, it's a very common sort of problem that people um, talk about when trying to motivate the partition function. It's a, it's a sort of assignment problem. So you have um, 20 people, and there are uh, 20 tasks. But there are, so this is a sort of work team. So the group of people are going to work on some task. And there are uh, four different tasks. The first task is uh, very easy and fun, uh, and six people get to work on that task. The next task is sort of medium, and four people to get to work on that task. And then you have sort of two crappy tasks at the bottom, and five people work on each of those two. And so the 20 people uh, arrive at work, as they do every day, uh, and the um, boss of the team um, comes in and says, uh, you six work on the nice task, you four work on the medium task, and you other two groups of five work on the, on the bad task. And uh, the idea is that for fairness, this is to be done um, randomly. But on a given day, the, uh, the, the gaffer comes in and uh, the, this boss happens to have uh, four siblings on, on the work team. And those four siblings all end up uh, in the good task. So the four sibs, uh, get the good task and the others say oh you know that's not fair and the the, the, the gaffer says you know well what do you mean that's not fair uh, that was just chance you know I, I'm the governor I, I use my uh, randomness machine and this is the, the thing that came out you can't uh, argue with randomness and they say well if it was random it was really um, unlikely and they work it out so how do they work it out well the number of ways of doing it fairly we have 20 people and we are uh, putting them into into these groups um, using the, and well, that's exactly the problem that's solved by the partition function. So this is equal to 20 factorial 
over 6 factorial, 4 factorial, 5 factorial, 5 factorial. So this is uh, going to be some very large number, and you should be careful about working out. So I mean, if you try to work out 20 factorial, you'll um, find that that number is, uh, is inconveniently large. Now, that's the, that's the set of possible distributions of the jobs. But we're interested in the distributions that uh, are unfair, the distributions that look like the one that, the, that actually happened, where the four particular people, the four sibs of the, of the governor, uh, all end up on the good task. And so if that's the case, we have 16 uh, people left, two of them end up on the good task, four on the medium task, and five each on the, on the two bad tasks. Uh, and so how many ways are there doing that? So, you know, there's also the, the four siblings, which are also being put into the uh, good task. We're looking at the configurations that satisfy the constraint, where the, the uh, siblings end up in the good task, plus two other people. So this is 16, uh, 2, 4, 5, 5. And so we get 16 factorial over 2 factorial, uh, 4 factorial, 5 factorial, 5 factorial. And so the probability of this assignment happen happening by chance is going to be equal to this number divided by that number. And so we end up with um, 16 factorial, 2 factorial, 4 factorial, 5 factorial, 5 factorial, and then divided by this number, so we end up with 6 factorial, 4 factorial, 5 factorial, 5 factorial, divided by 20 factorial. Um, that, 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 they all cancel here, and then uh, you can cancel most of the uh, 20 factorial with the 16. So again, you never actually want to calculate 20 factorial, but instead you're just going to have to multiply 20 by 19 by um, 18 by 17. When you do all of that, you end up with uh, 0 0.0031. And so that's, that's the zero there. So that's the probability that this, um, that this assignment, this apparently unfair assignment, happened by chance. In other words, the workers were correct uh, to accuse the, the gaffer of cheating, cheating, the chance that this was a random um, assignment is actually very low. Thank you.